Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Girls with Voices podcast. My name is Zalega Fuyana and I'm going to be your host for today. I am joined by these wonderful ladies who are going to be my co-hosts. Hi everyone, my name is Kalesi Limbofo. Hi guys, my name is Chantel Chisiri. Hey guys, I'm Sibo, which is short for Swinging Kosimoyo. Okay, so let's get right into it. Today we're going to be talking about something that has really affected every single person, but especially us girls. We're going to be talking about the pandemic, COVID-19, how it has really just affected us through this, how many, two years, almost two Mm -hmm. years. Yeah, so uh, let's just talk about how life before COVID was. Like, do you guys remember that? Because, like, sometimes I feel like I don't even remember, like, 2019, 2018. I just remember COVID, masks, sanitizers, and what, what. So, how do you guys remember life before COVID? It has life before COVID, and I remember when I was in the freedom. Because I was in the house, I was in the house, and I was like, okay, am I wearing my, my mask, mask correctly? I was in the house, and I was in the house, so hey, I'm in the village, and I have a mask. You know, it's funny how you're only worried about wearing the mask correctly for any police. <laughs> but anyway, I feel like for me, when I see videos from pre-COVID times, I'm shocked. I'm like, yeah. <gasps> look at how close we were sitting next to each other, mm-hmm. wear our masks type of thing. So I feel like now COVID has become very normal to us. Like mm-hmm. it's just an instinct to be, oh, I should take my mask, oh, I should sanitize my hands. Mm. So it's very odd to think of pre-COVID times to me now because even when I watch movies from pre-COVID, I'm like, why are they not wearing masks (laughs) or videos or pictures from school before COVID in assembly? I'm like, look at how many people are in one room. So, yeah. Well, for me, I think... That, that thing, you know, I can't go out with my friends, you know, school kids, you know, we want to go out for movies, but we can't because of s- social distancing. We're scared, which, what if I get covered? And this thing, yeah, vaccination, which we're now restricted to going to certain places because we need to get vaccinated. So for me, I can't really remember life before COVID because mm-hmm. it's now a new normal. Yeah, true. It definitely is our new normal. So what was like your favorite thing to do before COVID? Like, uh, my favorite thing was going out with my friends mostly, like yeah. places like Abo Hillside, Sfige, and do Amao so and just relax, and especially on weekends. Mm. Yeah, well. mm. But hey, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, well, we can go. First. All right, for me, COVID taught me to appreciate the little things, mm. the tiniest things that. I didn't care about that's what I look back at now and I'm like oh I miss when I would do this you know a little thing like just being able to look pretty true in your full potential you know now you have to wear a mask and you see people and you're like I bet they don't know what's in your mouth (laughs) so it's the type of thing where it's those little things that we miss like just being able to go out without a mask being able to not sanitize your hands every hour and sometimes you have these little cuts that you didn't know about now you're sanitizing your hands so it's a type of thing where you appreciate the tiniest little things that we had before I feel like you just can't show off your pretty lipstick that you bought yesterday True. Yeah, so, <laughs> now what's the use of you have lipstick here on corner so yeah. Um, even when you go out though now, like things are opening back up, especially if you've been vaccinated. Even if you go out, do you guys feel like you still have that like let me be careful or when you bump into someone or you're squashed, you now have that anxiety. You're woody, ish, what if they have COVID or you know, my mask it should be mm-hmm. up. Or even when you're on the phone, have you guys ever been on the phone in town and you can't speak properly because of But you're like, ish, if I take off my mask I'm going to jail, <laughs> but this person can't hear me on the phone. So it's like, even if things go back to that normal, like 2019 and before, I feel like there's still going to be that anxiety. Mm. You know, I might get COVID. And with these new variants like Omicron and whatever it is, it's just, yeah. yeah. 
Well, I think Uti, whenever you get a flu bug, you think, ah, what if it's COVID? You consider COVID True. testing, you know, and that thing, it really affects us, our mental health, because at the end of the day, the, it's the little things that make us go for, take our drastic measures, you know, a little flu bug. You're not even allowed in public spaces. Even in my class, mm. they will tell you, don't come to school if you know you're sick, even if it's just a cut. What if it's COVID? <laughs> oh, yeah. I totally agree. It's like we're now living in fear of COVID. Well, most people have just been like, it is what it is. There's some people that are genuinely fed up, but I feel like for the majority, we're now living in fear of COVID. There's a lot of things that we restrict ourselves to doing that were normal and still are, and are still very acceptable, regardless of the fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic. But there's some things that people are like, no, we're not going to do this just because they're afraid. So it's kind of like now... Everyone is just living in fear of COVID. As she said, you sneeze, you're going to buy a mm-hmm. test going down your nose. And for me, it's just, so yeah, it's very unfortunate that we all have to live in fear of the virus. Okay, so let's talk about like our personal experience with how COVID really affected us in our personal lives. So I think for all of us, we were still in school, hey, mm-hmm. when the pandemic hit. So what was like the biggest thing that affected you and even like I also want to know how did you guys feel when they said okay there's now this virus well uh, going to lockdown for two weeks I think that's what we were told that it was like two weeks in the beginning Mm -hmm. so how did you feel what were your like initial thoughts I won't lie we celebrated we were happy we were like oh prolonged holiday I remember I remember it very vividly because that was the start of a disaster but we were all called into assembly and we were told you guys are not coming back to school tomorrow there's a virus so they taught us how to use online learning and everything and then they said you guys are going and this was two weeks before schools closed mm-hmm. so they told us for the last two weeks of school you're gonna have online it was in around april march yeah, before yeah. april they were like you're gonna do online for two weeks then have your holiday then we'll meet back face to face when the issue is contained we were happy we were so, so happy. We were like, yeah, school's out. And we found ourselves crying to go back to school at a certain point because it really wasn't conducive. Some people didn't have online. And the online of it wasn't a very conducive method of like learning because sometimes you don't understand. Plus, there's nothing that will force you to do your work. So it's the type of thing where you give in to those little side urges or would you just go to sleep? Hmm. you know that type of thing like miss your lesson Hmm. exactly so yeah i feel like those are the difficulties that we faced after such a big celebration because we thought we were missing school for just two weeks true mina i really faced the challenge when it comes to online learning because it concerns and i would only panic okay ganjeng ya funda only masemboni a timetable yama exams it was okay Kanji, like, vele, we have a question, we have a phone. Because, I will have to make a pressure. Mu and Joe, mele, like, uzazi, lut, so mele, mbali, or I should look at my schoolwork or something. But, hey, online, like, hey, vele, it's. Yeah, I think online less learning, it really disrupted our daily timetables because for us when when we're told schools are closing we i think we almost threw it through a party because we were so excited <laughs> schools are closing we're not learning and they told us we'll be doing online lessons i remember me and my friends would we would visit each other but like guys we need to write exercises because our teacher will tell us i want my exercises when schools are open they're like ah, you don't even know if schools are opening <laughs> so we we'll write when we're told schools are opening and at the end of the day we thought, ah, we're in Form 3, you know. So 2021 is still far, but right now it's 2021 <laughs> and we're writing. True. I feel like I was so excited because I was in A-level and, you know, in A-level, the work just keeps on piling up and piling mm-hmm. up and piling up. So you get excited to say, okay, there's this two weeks break. I'm going to relax. Then two weeks becomes a month. A month becomes two months, three months. Now you're like, okay, maybe I need to actually do something mm-hmm. about my life. <laughs> and for us, I remember our school was just like, okay, yeah, just take a break. We can always catch up with the syllabus. But then there was no catching up. There was no going back to school. And even with our online learning, we started like two months in. So we were very, very behind. 
And another misconception that I feel like people have is that people say, oh yeah, you're doing homeschooling. But that wasn't homeschooling that we had. Mm-hmm. It was confusion, mm-hmm. for lack of a better word. We were just at home teaching yourself concepts and with being in a higher level of education like A level or university for us, mm-hmm. you can't exactly teach yourself these concepts. It's not like learning one plus one or a story sum, mm-hmm. you know, or you read in the textbook that photosynthesis is this and you copy down the definition. You actually have to like be taught the concept, the processes that you're learning about. Um, so even when you guys were now doing, like when we're now doing online learning, how was the home environment like? Because I think that's another important thing to talk about. As girls, you have so many responsibilities mm-hmm. in your household. So the balancing of, you know, chores, and you're teaching yourself, you are confused, you don't know what's going on. How was that like? Were you able to manage it or it really sent you into a spiral? Well, for me, it really wasn't a conducive environment to be able to study and do house shows at the same time because besides schoolwork, I had co-curriculum activities and I would choose, most of the time I would choose my co-curriculum activities before school because, well, I thought it's the end of the world. It's, I mean... People are dying, and by that time, there was no vaccine. So we really didn't have a solution to COVID-19. So it were, it was really hard for me to cope, but we were just hanging there and hope the TV is just light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like, personally, in my experience, I was lucky enough, because my mom is a teacher, mm-hmm. so she understands. So I feel like I was lucky enough to be in a household that understands that this is school time. So the same time it would have been school time at school, it's her school time at home. But there will be those times, like one, two, three times, where while you're in the middle of writing a test. And you know when you're like, oh, no, I'm writing. And you know, for me, I'm also in A-level, so I had free periods. So sometimes I'll sleep, then the next minute I'm up. So maybe your mom will see you sleeping, and then the next second when she says, do this for me, you're like, oh, no, I'm in a lesson. It then looks like I'll phone. Mm-hmm. So it's the type of thing where there's always that complication of like that not knowing whether or not you're actually doing work, mm-hmm. schoolwork, or you're just avoiding being spoken to and things like that. So I feel like that's a difficulty that was faced when it comes to duties and schoolwork at the same time. And I think like... African parents will always be African parents. Mm-hmm. As long as we go on like ukona endlin, they will always find something for you to do. Uto sathe like you have tathi bhula go yeah do this. Uto sathe at do this, do that. Vele African parents. Hey. Mm-hmm. And when you try to say I'm I'm trying to read, they will tell you, hey, you had all the time to read. Why are you reading now? When I'm telling mm-hmm. you to do something. True. And you have a sense to kona kona why uso bala masente yenza lo. And then to ba ve ding lo go tui yenza. Oh, go go go. Tanya li roof something. They just have to give you something to do. That's so true. And like there were no libraries or you know mm. academic spaces open where we could go and read. So it was really like between a rock and a hard place. And even with like extracurricular activities or the activities that you like to do at school, maybe it was choir or drama. Mm. Did you guys feel like you had an outlet to express that side of you? Or like on online learning, do you feel like um, were sports included? Because I know some schools were saying, okay, you do one kilometer run and you send us your results, whatever it is. But for you guys, were sports included? Were extracurricular activities included? Because I feel like a lot of the time when people talk about school, they don't talk about the holistic experience. It's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, academics. But there's more to that. It's also seeing my friends, interacting with my peers. It's also sports, war cries, you know, those extra things that mm-hmm. make school school. So how did you guys express that side of yourself or you didn't have like any outlet for that? Well, I think a lockdown became a barrier to us to exercise our abilities full potential because, well, let's say I'm doing, I'm a sports 
Mm. I won't be able to go to school for practice to get enough facilities for that certain sport that I do. So I'm basically limited to activities that are only in the peripheral of the available facility like e-learning, you know. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can only partake in debate and public speaking. I can just submit my article online or I'm a lesson, isn't it? But I'm actually restricted to other activities that involve traveling. Yeah, true. In my personal experience, we had sports very involved in online learning, where we had running projects, you know, like each house. So it was kind of like a competition to like make that school spirit to see which house will have mm-hmm. the most kilometers or something like that by the end of this month. So it became a thing where people would go out and jog. But then I'm not sure if you guys heard the stories that then came out during the pandemic because there's no one during lockdown i mean there's no one on the streets now we're having young girls jogging by themselves we had a lot of stories of rape Mm -hmm. remember there was a woman who was um reported to have been raped and then murdered and left in the bush while on her morning jog Mm -hmm. so it's the type of thing where now the lockdown is also infringing on our private lifestyle that has to do with school Mm -hmm. and online learning because now i'm scared if i go out everyone is in their house everyone is afraid of covid who will see me if i'm running and i come across a middle-aged man the first thing i'm gonna think obviously is i'm scared because there's no one else there's no witness etc so i feel like that was a very big barrier and that was a very big problem when it came to trying to continue with sports outside the school system yeah true and even with like so with all this pressure that we were feeling during school even now like Chantal is still learning um with all this pressure that we were feeling do you feel like it really had like a big effect on your mental health I know for me I'm just always anxious all the time like I don't know like I'm out of school now and there's nothing to be anxious about but I'll just feel myself like you know, mm-hmm. and I'll start biting my nails or whatever. And I'm like, wait, like, what am I anxious about? And it's nothing, but it's that, um, I don't know, PTSD, maybe PTSD is too dramatic, but it's that <laughs> experience of having been anxious for the whole academic year. Mm-hmm. And now when you're done, you're like, what do I do? And also there was no counseling. There was no therapy that you could go to. Everything is closed down. So how do you guys feel like it affected your mental health? Well, I think, Uti, since we couldn't access AMA facilities such as therapy, as you said, it really had that impact on our mental health because right now we're writing, you know. Zimsek won't pause because you had two years lockdown. Mm -hmm. Exams will still be there at the end of the day. You still need to write. Life has to go on, you know. So I think it really had that huge impact because right now I need I have school and I also have a life besides school, you sure. know. So I need to be able to balance everything at the same time and I need to make sure that in everything I excel at the mm-hmm. end of the day. So I think it really had a huge, a negative impact on our mental health. Yeah, I agree when she says negative impact because... Not only were we made anxious by like missing school and still having exams, but then there's things like losing our loved ones, losing friends. Mm -hmm. It was very emotionally damaging and took an emotional toll on us, even if it's just people that you don't know. But when you're listening to the radio and 55 people died in total in Zimbabwe today, now I'm thinking... Each of these 55 people have families, Mm -hmm. they have friends, and it's very... It's sad. So it's the type of thing where now you are now sympathizing with the families of people lost. Now, I don't know if other people do this, but now you're sitting here like, what if that was my sister? Mm -hmm. Or what if that was my... And then it's very... And the fact that we're also closed in, you, you really don't have anything to do. You're left to dwell on those things, dwell on the news that you hear, dwell on the fear. So it's very... It was a very negative experience because firstly, you have nothing to do. You're in the house all day. Our mental health is damaged completely because the whole world is on social media 24-7. We are arguing about things that have nothing to do with us. We are unhealthily on our phones. Our screen times went up to 15 hours a day, which is very unhealthy for your eyes as well. So it's the type of thing where our mental health is really damaged and we kind of lost focus on important things. Because now, even after we are out of lockdown, my phone is 
the center of everything because for approximately two years, that's where I built myself. My personality on my phone won't be the same as my personality in person because I've worked more on my digital self than I have on my actual physical self due to the fact that it was where I lived for majority of the time. School, communication, extended family, they all know me from my gadget rather than in person. So I feel like that also affected how we interact as humans to each other. We've, because now, like when there's no internet or anything, people will be like, oh, what do I do with myself now? Mm. So it's like, it's impacted very much how we interact in person. Yeah, adding on to that, I feel like really it's scary because we have 55 dates per day. And we have a lot of people who are going to say, maybe they're going to say, maybe a town or something. And you're not sure what's going to Did I also get in touch with the person or anything? So I'm going to say, okay, am I next? Who's next? Yeah. True, definitely. And even like Sibo said, I feel like there was also an effect, a negative effect on our physical health. Because mm-hmm. being on your phone 15 hours, um, your sleep pattern is changing. At 1 a.m., you're on your phone instead of sleeping. You know, you're sitting every single day on the mm-hmm. couch, on the sofa, you're eating. Lots of people use food as an unhealthy mechanism. So I think it even affected our um, physical health. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed our episode. Please do interact with us. If you have any comments, do leave them down below on our YouTube channel. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.